OpenAI has just launched the GPT-5 model, its latest update that will fuel the chat GPT platform and will be available to all its 700 million users. With Mark Zuckerberg throwing everything at the superintelligence fight and Google shaping its own battle, there's a big question now. Whether GPT-5 will give OpenAI, which pioneered the generative AI race, the edge. And what's in it for India? Starting this week, we are launching a new show, iSight or AI Sight, which brings our viewers the latest breakthroughs, buzz and battles in the world of AI. Please do keep watching and share your feedback. OpenAI calls GPT-5 its smartest, fastest and most useful model yet. It says that GPT-5 features state-of-the-art performance across coding, mathematics, writing, health and visual perception and that it knows when to respond quickly and when to think longer to provide expert responses. OpenAI says that GPT-5 is a unified system. What does that even mean? It says that while GPT-5 works on a model that answers questions with deeper reasoning for harder problems, it also has a real-time router that quickly decides which model to use based on the conversation type and complexity. A user's explicit prompt also counts. For example, if you type think hard about this problem in the chat box, ChatGPT will use the deeper reasoning model. An AI model is the type of tech being used to answer your queries and different GPT models vary in size, training data and architecture. While newer versions like GPT-5 and 4 are trained on more data and more efficient in complex problem solving, earlier models like GPT-2 and GPT-3 are useful for basic text generation, autocomplete and chatbots. OpenAI says that while GPT-5 answers questions more quickly, it is more useful for real-world queries. We've all had concerns about AI making up stuff, right? That AI gave you a recent instance or an event in history that never actually happened. OpenAI has addressed this elephant in the room. It says it has made significant advances in reducing hallucinations, improving instruction following, and minimizing psychophancy. And while doing this, they are focusing on three of ChatGPT's most common uses so far. Writing, coding, and health. How? We take a look. OpenAI says that GPT-5 can create responsive websites, apps, and games with aesthetic sensibility in just one prompt. Testers said that it understands things like spacing and typography, and uses white space, or what we often call visual relief, well. You can see screenshots of some of these tests conducted by OpenAI on your screen right now. The company also says that GPT-5 is its most capable writer yet. It's able to help users steer and translate rough ideas into compelling writing with depth and rhythm. On your screen, you can see some comparisons of writing styles of GPT-5 and gpt 4 o Notice how GPT-5's response has a larger emotional arc with stronger imagery and a striking ending. GPT-4O's version follows a more predictable structure and rhyme and doesn't have much imagery. OpenAI says that GPT-5 is also its best model yet for health-related questions. But remember, chat GPT just can't replace a medical professional and its accuracy can't be trusted. Whatever it interprets must always be checked and double-checked by a professional. And when it comes to math and coding, OpenAI says that GPT-5 is much smarter than the previous models. But what's really important and relevant to us users is OpenAI's claim that GPT-5 will hallucinate less. Do note, they're not saying that it won't hallucinate at all. According to OpenAI's data, GPT-5 responses are about 45% less likely to contain a factual error than gpt 4 o and OpenAI claims that alongside improved factuality, GPT-5 more honestly communicates when it is not able to do something. OpenAI says that in order to achieve a high reward during training, reasoning models may learn to lie about successfully completing a task or be overly confident about an uncertain answer. And that GPT-5 won't do this. So, if you're a chat GPT user, how do you use GPT-5? It is the new default in ChatGPT, replacing GPT-4 O, OpenAI O3, OpenAI O4 Mini, GPT-4.1, and GPT-4.5 for signed in users. Just open ChatGPT and type your question, and GPT-5 applies reasoning automatically. Paid users can still select GPT-5 thinking from the model picker. Now that we have discussed the latest that OpenAI has to offer, 
what is its CEO Sam Altman's take on this development? He says it's a pretty significant step towards artificial general intelligence. In his vision, artificial general intelligence is an advanced form of AI that can understand, learn, and perform any intellectual task just like a human can. And Altman has a prediction, a big one for India. He says, India is incredibly fast growing and could become OpenAI's largest market worldwide. India is currently the company's second largest market behind the US. He said what Indians are doing with AI is really quite remarkable. I quote him, We are specially focused on bringing products to India, working with local partners to make AI work great for India and make it more affordable for its people. The OpenAI CEO said he was excited to visit India in September. Nick Turley, who is the head of the ChatGPT app, said that the new model significantly improves understanding across 12 Indian languages. And in other AI news, Geo is developing a set of tools and platforms called GeoBrain, an AI business solution that can be offered to enterprises. This is currently used in different parts of Geo operations like network planning, maintenance, and customer services. Currently, GeoBrain is designed to analyze data from devices, apps, and networks to power stuff like better mobile networks, personalized apps, and automation. Reliance says that GeoBrain integrates 5G speed with advanced machine learning, and that the platform can help a wide range of services, including healthcare, education, gaming, and entertainment. And in the middle of all of this, another global player appears to be betting big on India. According to a report in the Business Standard, Amazon Web Services plans to invest $12.7 billion in India by 2030. This, the report says, is with the aim of acing the artificial general intelligence race. The investment centers on expanding cloud infrastructure, including data centers, networking, and AI-ready computing capacity. AWS sees India's large base of software developers and startups as a strategic advantage. At the same time, Another player, SAP, has also opened its new campus in Bangalore. This is the company's second largest R&D hub outside its headquarters in Germany. The India Innovation Park, as it's called, is located close to Bangalore's international airport. In Global Buzz, Microsoft has posted a YouTube video that envisions how we might interact with Windows in the coming five years. It says that AI will play a huge part in how we interact with our desktops and laptops in the upcoming years. In the video, an executive says that the world of mousing around, keyboard typing will feel alien as it does to Gen Z to use MS-DOS. And because we have talked about AI models, it's important to mention that Anthropic also recently introduced its most advanced model capable of software development, the Claude Opus 4.1. The Google-backed AI startup says that the new model is an upgrade to Claude Opus 4 and is capable of real-world coding and reasoning tasks. All of these developments come at a time the world's biggest AI developers, Google, Meta, Amazon, and Microsoft, have dramatically increased spending to pay for AI data centers. These four companies expect to spend nearly $400 billion just in this fiscal year. And OpenAI is in early discussions to allow employees to cash out at a $500 billion valuation, a huge step up from its current $300 billion valuation.